Welcome to CityWise. I'm your host, Tiana Stevens. CityWise is produced by the City of Rochester to shine a spotlight on city living at its best. Well, in a continued effort to strengthen community police relations, an old city program is getting re-energized thanks to the dedicated work of Nancy Johns Price, administrator of the city's Southeast Neighborhood Service Center, RPD Deputy Chief of Community Engagement, Wayne Harris, and AmeriCorps Community Liaison, Alice Sanders. They're here to talk about the Positive Tickets program. Program. Thank you guys so much for coming on today. Thank you for having, for having us. us. So Nancy, um, a lot of people in Rochester are familiar with this program from years before. Um, how did that program first come to Rochester and what's different about Positive Tickets 2.0? So uh, Youth Voice One Vision, which is the City County Youth Council, mm -hmm. went to the National Youth Crime Prevention Conference and heard about this program from uh, Mounted Police uh, Ward Clapham. And they were like, oh, it's exciting. We got to bring this back. We can do this. So we got back. We got going. We sat down with a couple of uh, RPD that were in our, working with our recreation centers. Mm -hmm. And we got it up and going. And we were doing pretty well with different patrols, youth going out mm -hmm. on patrols. And this is giving people a, a positive ticket positive for good behavior. Ticket. So we're for finding youth. them. Okay. Right. So we find them doing something, maybe uh, helping someone in a garden, uh, wearing their bike helmet, all different kinds of things, and we would give them a positive ticket. 2.0 is a little different because now we are connected directly with the Rochester Police Department. Mm -hmm. It's now going to be one of their programs, and that's going to breathe the life in it that we needed. Mm -hmm. Deputy Chief Harris, um, what's the story behind bringing this back to Rochester, and why now? Well, because we went out into the community and we asked them what they were looking for, and they said mm -hmm. that they wanted to engage with us. They said they wanted some positive promotion, and they said uh, that it was important to build the relationship. So the positive ticket program is an opportunity for us to not only recognize someone for doing something great and something awesome in the community, mm -hmm. but it gives us a chance to introduce ourselves and to get to know that person and to just to, to further that engagement mm -hmm. strategy. And Alice, you deserve a positive ticket yourself because you actually came out of well, retirement. You. You're a retired <laughs> RPD and now uh, you're with AmeriCorps. Well, um, <laughs> what made you want to get involved with this program? Um, actually, the program kind of just fell in my lap, mm -hmm. uh, surprisingly and pleasantly. Um, I was doing some volunteer work in, in Rochester and got recruited into the AmeriCorps program mm -hmm. and was positioned at the Southeast Neighborhood Service Center under Nancy. And um, she had this this beautiful police program highlighted, and um, and uh, was assigned to me. And it was a good fit. I think so. <laughs> Nancy, for people that don't know, what is a neighborhood service center? So we there are four of us in the city of Rochester. Okay. There's one in each quadrant. So the neighborhood service center is designed to be the one stop shop for City Hall. Okay. So if you have issues with neighbors, um, worries about police concerns, safety things, uh, code violations, mm -hmm. neighborhood associations, you have a business permit that you need, handicap permit, we take care of it at the Neighborhood Service Center. So we're engaged in community uh, associations and business associations to keep people engaged and involved in what's going on in their neighborhoods. Sure, and it's all right there in your own neighborhood. Yeah. Okay, um, this has been in the works for quite some time. A lot of things needed to happen to, to pull this all together. What, what was needed and what's the most important part of, of planning for this? Well, I think the most important part was we've, we've got the police department with Deputy Chief Harris and Chief Seminelli and Mayor Warren all saying, yes, let's do this. So now it's got all of that strength behind it to be able to be a program that I believe then will be able to continue on mm -hmm. because it's got a home. Mm -hmm. So Deputy Chief Harris, how exactly does this work? And you brought some of uh, positive tickets with you to show. We did and <clears throat> essentially it will be this. If we're out on patrol or just in the neighborhoods and we see someone doing something wonderful like, you know, helping someone that's struggling with groceries, you know, carry their groceries to their door. Our officers are now going to stop, introduce themselves to include their name, badge number, and the section where they live, or I'm sorry, the section where they work, 
and explain to the person that they will recognize doing something positive in the community and that we wanted to officially recognize them. Mm -hmm. They'll produce the positive ticket, present the positive ticket to the individual that they've, uh, that they've witnessed, uh, and along with that comes a coupon or a gift card so they can go out and, and get something for it, um, mm -hmm. a slice of pizza or a soda or something. But um, again, this is an opportunity for us to humanize ourselves, mm -hmm. for people out there to see something beyond the uniform and to see me as Wayne as opposed to Deputy Chief Harris. Mm -hmm. And um, from what we're looking at, it, it's going to be uh, received as, as positive. Um, and uh, as I said before, according to what the community told us, this is what they want. This, they, they want engagement opportunities. Mm -hmm. Alice, who are some of our community partners that have already signed on? Um, Big community partners, the YMCA, um, we have Domino's, um, Subway, 7-Eleven, uh, and who, McDonald's, and um, Donuts Delight came in okay. the other day. And we have letters out in the community, I'm sure, after mm -hmm. um, this program and after the press release the other day that others will be wanting to come in. Mm -hmm. And you've been making a lot of phone calls, engaging community partners, inviting them to be part of this program. What's the reaction when you make that call and you tell them, hey, this is coming back to Rochester? Um, I've had nothing but, but positive um, feedback. and. And folk just like Domino's, uh, they, they're just so wonderful. Those people are just so wonderful. They came out and they said, oh, they, we, they, we cannot wait to get involved with the community. Um, we're community-oriented folks, and um, we so uh, want to be involved with the police and walking in these patrols. And we hope also that out of this, this communication and relationship that some of the, the, the young people or citizens also become a part of our uh, group right. in the future. So it, it, it works all kinds of ways. So community partners are welcome to walk uh, with officers on a positive patrol? So we actually haven't worked out the logistics, or logistics of exactly how that's going to occur, but one of the ideas that we've had are putting together the volunteers mm -hmm. from our sponsors to go out with officers, uh, at least initially, to recognize people doing great stuff in the mm -hmm. community. But beyond that, um, what we'd like and what we're hoping to build is this being something that officers do on a regular basis, not necessarily with a, a volunteer or a team of volunteers, sure. but as they're driving around in the community and they see Tiana doing something great, they're going to stop and introduce themselves to Tiana and say, you know, that was awesome. So uh, you mentioned some of the, the coupons that would be with a positive ticket that Tiana might get. Um, so what, what specifically um, do you have right now? Well, let's do uh, Domino's example. Why don't you? Well, we're, we have some food items okay. right now. Always but, good. Um, <laughs> but um, I have also solicited um, the museum um, and places. Okay, so fun uh, things to do. Right, fun things to do, skating mm -hmm. places, um, barbershops, uh, places that you know want to do your eyebrows. Yeah. Um, we, we've solicited, Very nice. solicited uh, the um, cell phone shops for cell phone mm -hmm. minutes. So we're looking for not just you know, not just send kids out to eat, but to, mm -hmm. to have something to do for fun as and, well. And anyone can receive a positive ticket too, right? Not right just to youth. Right, mm -hmm. it's citizens. Okay. So we're going to be looking at everybody, no matter what your age is. Are you looking for more community partners to come on board? We yeah, always absolutely. need community partners. <laughs> what should a business owner do um, to get on board with positive tickets? Just give us a call. Should I? Yep. Say the telephone number. <laughs> sure. Yes. Um, you can reach us at four two eight seven six four zero. I'll also put this out too. Um, we have the RPD Empowers Rochester um, okay. site, so um, right now we've been using it for some of our other strategies. But they're more than welcome to contact. Is us that by too. email? Yes. Okay. Um, w when you guys tell children and people out in the community that this is coming, what's their reaction? And with the rollout at the Frederick Douglass R Center, um, what was the children's response? Well, yesterday was yeah. phenomenal. Yeah. It was. Frederick Douglass, we must have had 50 pizza. kids. Uh -huh. And they wanted, do you have a positive yes. ticket now? Yeah. Mm -hmm. We, we want a ticket now. now. <laughs> you know, and then uh, John Adams was there from Domino's. Mm -hmm. And he, all the kids ran up and said, well, can we get pizza? And so I think he's going to make an arrangement with uh, Frederick Douglass. But the, the kids that were there and the youth 
were very ready mm -hmm. and even came up and told us a couple of things that they do like taking care of their younger siblings or and looking after so they were recognizing that there are things they could be noticed mm -hmm. for so and they're ready was, and it was so nice to see them running up to the police officers sure. to you know to that engagement and that's what this is all about mm -hmm. um, you know a positive um, uh, connection, positive relationship, mm -hmm. um, you know, in order to build build trust. Absolutely. If you have trust, then you have you can do sort of anything. Mm -hmm. And Nancy, there was a specific reason why you chose to do this at the Frederick Douglass Art Center. Is that right? Yes. Uh, well, Frederick Douglass, for one thing, is right in the southeast quadrant, mm -hmm. and that's actually where we're kicking off the program okay. to try it with the Goodman section okay. in the southeast for our PD. So um, and. The Frederick Douglass R Center uh, is always busy, always doing things, mm -hmm. and they're always looking at ways to recognize their, mm -hmm. their youth that come to the R Center, and the same thing with the library. So they're very engaged with the families, so it was a good place to go and, and say, we notice that you do good things. Sure. So it was a perfect place to launch it. And Frederick Douglass himself was always looking for ways to engage young people, older people, mm -hmm. in making sure that we're taking care of each other. Absolutely. How will you measure success with this program? So if five years from now I do a survey to the community and I say, how do you feel about the Rochester Police Department? And overwhelmingly they come back and say, you know what, they're great. We see them all the time, we know them, you know, I know the officers that work in my neighborhood. That's mm -hmm. how we measure success. Mm -hmm. um, this isn't a, a crime stats number kind of thing, but, but if we can show later on that the relationship between the Rochester Police Department and the community is that much better, or that the people in the community um, know us and trust us and are willing to say that, that's how we prove success. Mm -hmm. could, could I add to that? Absolutely. Um, Ward Clapham, the originator and um, the writer of this whole program, Positive Tickets, um, said that there were over a million positive tickets given mm -hmm. nationwide, and that if um, only 1% of that million connected to a positive relationship or, or made a life changing, uh, was a life changing event. Mm -hmm. That was enough. I consider that success. Absolutely. Yeah. So. Wonderful. Nancy, final question. Why is this so important for Rochester? Because we need to recognize that more people are doing good things mm -hmm. than doing things that they shouldn't be. Mm -hmm. There are people out there that we don't pay attention to, we don't recognize, because mm -hmm. we focus on where the issues are, where the problems are. And it's important for a community to also go, we do have good things going on. Right. So it helps the community start to have that uplift and that hope, and, and this is one of those ways to get that out there and get it active. Wonderful, thank you guys so much for coming. I did one last word. Well, I just wanted to add to what Nancy said. That's the, the synergy, the momentum that we're trying to, 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 to get going because when the sponsors especially start to realize their potential, to encourage positive behavior. Mm -hmm. That's what that's what this is all about. That's mm -hmm. the momentum that we want here in Rochester. Positive spin on Rochester. Beautiful. Thank you guys so much. Thank For you. more information about the positive ticket program or if you'd like to get involved as a community partner, contact the city's Southeast Neighborhood Service Center at 585-428-7640. You can also head to cityofrochester.gov slash positive tickets. Citywise will be right back. Attention homeowners and landlords, is lead lurking in your home or rental property? The city's lead hazard control program can help you get the lead out. Qualified applicants are eligible for a lead-based paint risk assessment and assistance to address all lead-based paint hazards at the property. Applications are available at Pathstone Incorporated, 15 Print Street, and at Action for a Better Community, 550 East Main. Call the city's Office of Business and Housing Development at 428-6912 or visit cityofrochester.gov slash lead paint for more.
recycle every week thousands of pounds of food that would otherwise be thrown out by vendors at the City of Rochester Public Market is being redistributed to dozens of locations around the city, turning waste into a resource. The Flower City Pickers are a 100% volunteer-run organization created by Corey Humphrey, and he joins us today along with Charles Simmons, Vice President of the Flower City Pickers. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for coming on today. Thank you for having us. So, Corey, you're a transplant. You came to Rochester from Oklahoma uh, back in 2011, mm -hmm. found yourself at the, the Rochester Public Market, and, and you noticed something. Yes. What was that? Um, I noticed walking around um, that there was so many different varieties um, of fruits and veggies and all kinds of different stuff there. Mm -hmm. But I also noticed that off the tables, on the ground, there would be um, a potato here, a tomato there, mm -hmm. you know, something out of someone's bag rolled around, and people just wouldn't pick it up. Hmm. People were just walking by the stuff, even kicking it out of the way. And it's stuff that's perfectly fine. Mm -hmm. And I was really amazed at that and just blown away that people could just walk by perfectly okay food that mm -hmm. was just on the ground. And what did you do next? Um, well, um, back in uh, the start of 2015, um, I saw that there was a need for shelters and stuff that needed food. Mm -hmm. And I decided that I, I didn't have any money to help, but I had time mm -hmm. and I knew of a place where I could find food. Mm -hmm. And so I decided to go to the public market with a sign on my back that I hand painted uh -huh. that said I was collecting food for the homeless shelters, please donate and talk to me, mm -hmm. with a little smiley face. And I handed out um, a picture of myself to all the vendors and told them I'm going to be here every week so be nice to me <laughs> and um, please donate and if you can't let me go through your trash because uh -huh. it's not trash it's just food that's set aside that you're throwing away right and I uh, just started collecting food mm -hmm. and Charles how did you get involved with the Flower City Pickers? My wife was involved with it how her and Corey met online, uh -huh. and I went there one Saturday afternoon just walking and looking, and somebody asked me to move a box. I wasn't going to get my hands involved, <laughs> and I moved that one box, and I've been there ever since. <laughs> I just started enjoying it, uh -huh. and I found that it was a great, uh, nice thing to do to be able to help people. Mm -hmm. So Corey, once you started doing this, um, you kind of realized that there, re there really was a big need out there and then you had to recruit volunteers. Um, uh -huh. You guys just started with just picking on Saturdays? Yes, um, we just started on Saturdays. Um, it was during winter, so the market oh, yeah. wasn't really booming on Tuesdays and Thursdays, okay. like now during the summer. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I started, and the vendors just kind of looked at me like, oh, okay, people ask for free stuff all the time, mm. you know, but then when I started to come back every week mm -hmm. and had, you know, volunteers with me and other people and actually knew about the shelters and people would ask me questions and I'm like, oh yeah, we donate to them, you know, and stuff like mm -hmm. that. Um, we started getting more stuff. Vendors would wait for us at the end of the day. Instead of throwing stuff out throughout the day, they would set it aside mm -hmm. for us to collect at the end of the day. And it went from filling up a carload to filling up, you know, a, a couple of cars, mm. to vans, to having to just have more places to take it to. Mm -hmm. So we donate to soup kitchens, food pantries, homeless shelters, refugee centers, pretty much anyone who could use food, which mm -hmm. is everyone. Okay. And so how does a typical day at the market look like for, for volunteers? What do you do exactly? What the volunteers do, they have an A, B, and C. The A is the better food or okay. produce that they get, they set aside an A. Okay. B is second best. C is what cannot be used to set aside mm -hmm. in which the farmers come and pick it up in their okay. trucks and they take it to their farms for either for their pigs or for compost. Okay, so yeah. nothing's wasted. Nothing is wasted. Okay. Nothing is wasted. And are you looking for more volunteers to help with this effort? Um, we always uh, need volunteers, mm -hmm. and what we're really looking for right now um, is core volunteers. So these okay. are people who can come earlier and help set up things and mm -hmm. stay a little bit later and help, you know, organize and clean up things. 
we've been involved with a lot of the universities and different special needs groups and other places that come. So thankfully, we, we have a lot of helping hands right now. Mm -hmm. But what we need is more people on our board of directors and people who can help with um, our media, social media, and our website and kind of outreaching to other sure. places. Sure. Um, what are you looking for from volunteers? Can anyone volunteer? I know you've got yeah. some little kids out there. Mm -hmm. OK. Yep, uh, every, everyone can volunteer. There's, um, we've even had people, um, a friend of mine in Oklahoma volunteered and she would call the shelters every week for us. Oh. So even if you are homebound mm -hmm. or any uh, disabilities or handicaps, anything like that, mm -hmm. we can definitely work around that and find sure. how you can get involved. What was the reaction that you got from the shelters when you first started delivering these boxes of food? At first, people just wanted to know who I was, who I was with, and I told them, I'm like, I'm not with anybody, I'm just doing it. And they're like, well, you need a name. And I'm like, <laughs> my name is Corey, but like, it's not just me. And for a long time, we didn't have a name. I didn't want to create something. It just kind of snowballed into it. Okay. And um, the shelters and different organizations are really thankful, especially a lot of the refugee centers and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, and they're just really amazed at the quality of food that we can give to them that is a waste product of mm -hmm. the market. Sure. Charles, what, what do people tell you? How do they react when they hear about what you're doing? A lot of the people, they look surprised at first, but then when they see what we're doing, and what we're doing and how we're doing it, that changes their opinion of what we do and how we do it. Mm -hmm. Because we've had a group come from Buffalo to see what we were doing. Really? We had a group come from Syracuse to see what we were doing and the surrounding areas mm -hmm. just to see how we're set up or how we do with the A, B, and C mm -hmm. and the volunteers. Mm -hmm. And we find that that was a great thing to have people from out of town come to see what we're doing. And this is somewhat unique to Rochester, is that right? As far as I know, I'm, I'm not sure. I'm sure there's other places that do do this. Uh -huh. um, during the winter, I actually went to Oahu to work on um, farms and also volunteer at a place called um, Aloha Harvest, mm -hmm. which helps get things from farms and relocate them to shelters and stuff like that. So okay. it's kind of a mix between what we do and also similar to Food Link as well. Mm -hmm. And the community has really kind of shown a lot of support for Flower City Pickers. You guys were able to um, crowdfund for a bus, is that right? Yes, okay. um, the Knights of Columbus actually donated most of that money to us. That's yeah. wonderful. But we have done different uh, fundraisers like GoFundMes and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And what's the purpose of the bus? The bus is our, the original idea of the bus for me, because we started in winter, which uh -huh. is, and that in winter Rochester. that we started was a <laughs> rough winter, right. um, was to have two large 40 foot buses and just park them back to back mm -hmm. and open them up so that it could be okay. a heated shelter, it'd be mobile, sure. and then people could just flow you know, through it. Um, but we got a little, half school bus that has a couple of rusty holes in it. <laughs> That's what we could afford and mm -hmm. it works really great. It's uh, a storage shelter for us, but we also use it as shelter from the rain. People can sort it and we have tables set up and it's also oh, wow. a visual reminder that we're there at the market. Right. Um, it, it's a uh, paint uh, uh, it's the paint job and it's in progress and okay. so we're wanting to have <laughs> yeah we're wanting to have um, educational things on it different food groups mm -hmm. where you can find you know free meals free mm -hmm. food and then also different resources at the market and okay. stuff so flower city pickers has an educational component to it yes mm -hmm. okay Charles what keeps you motivated to do this work besides your wife well she left to take over our uh, Second Chance Community Service Center okay. on Clifford and Portage Street. And I just keep going because on Saturdays when I get there about 2, 2.30, we load my truck and we take it to the center and put it inside and Sundays they open the center up, bring the food out and it's free to the community. Mm -hmm. And then there's other communities where we take the food too. 
and they do the same thing. So I'll take my truck and we load it and away we go. Mm -hmm. And they just, and that's what keeps me going. I enjoy it. Yeah. And the people that you meet in and out, some of them look at you at first and then when they see you every week, then they say, oh, this is for real. Mm -hmm. So that's what keeps you going. Uh, finally, Corey, why is this so important for Rochester? A lot of people think that, you know, we need a lot more gardens and community projects and stuff like that, but we have a need and we have a resource. Mm. And unfortunately, the big resource is food waste at the market. And we need to relocate it and divert it from the landfill and find other alternatives for it. Mm -hmm. And I really hope that, you know, we can influence other people to just kind of act on their own and for people in Rochester to kind of open their eyes and to see that this is part of our community, whether mm -hmm. you turn an eye to it or, you know, not. And right. that, you know, this is where we're at now and this is how we can help die diversify everything. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Thank you guys so much for coming on today. Thank you very much. If you'd like to learn more about the Flower City Pickers or join them as a volunteer at the public market, you can give Corey a call at 585-414-5925 or visit their website, flowercitypickers.com. Thanks for joining us on this edition of CityWise. I'm Tiana Stevens, and we'll see you next week. Views and opinions expressed by guests appearing on CityWise do not necessarily reflect those of the host, WXXI staff, or any entity of or affiliated with the City of Rochester. If you have questions, comments, or program suggestions, contact CityWise at 311 or 428-1201 or send us an email at citywise at cityofrochester.gov.